It's becoming much clearer which issues are emerging as possible flashpoints in the 2024 presidential election, as both Democrats and Republicans start fine-tuning their messaging and pushing big legislative proposals. Moderate and progressive Democrats appear to be focusing their energy on social issues, like abortion and reproductive rights, as areas to motivate voters. New Jersey Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill is leading on new legislation that would expand access to contraception medication, a fight she's taking on amid chaos in Congress over a military spending bill. She joins me now. Congresswoman, thank you for joining us uh, from D.C. for the show. So talk to me about this new bill, the Convenient Contraception Act. How do you go about uh, enabling more people to access this pill? Um, well, that's exactly what this piece of legislation is about. So as you probably know, women can get a three-month prescription for birth control. And what this bill would allow you to do is to get a whole year prescription, which would just make it so much easier to have that kind of access. We know that the three-month limit um, leads to often gaps in coverage, unwanted results. And so as you're talking about family planning and you're talking about all the different things you can imagine going on, whether it's travel or just different family um, things that you have going on, it's so important to have this longer access to birth control. We also know that in areas across the country, millions of women are in what we call contraception deserts, meaning they don't have full access to reproductive health care options like contraception. It's really hard for them to access that. So making it easier is just provides much better health outcomes for women. Is legislation like this needed now, given the fact that the FDA has, you know, approved an over-the-counter contraceptive pill, the O-pill, just recently? You know, contraception um, for many of us is is very personal. We like a certain brand. We we found that it works well for us um, in so many different ways. And so sometimes people have a prescription that they very much prefer. Um, and so having access to that even if you know if you have the over-the-counter option, that's great. But to also have maybe your favored brand uh, and prescription medication that you can get a year-long access to just makes uh, for so many of us. I, I'd say you know so many of us working moms who find ourselves always so busy and on the run. This just takes one thing off the table that we have to manage and, and really makes life a lot easier. I'll also tell you that New Jersey has actually passed. Uh, sorry, that's the bell for votes, but uh, New Jersey has actually passed legislation. I'll start over. New Jersey has actually passed legislation to allow people to access one year's worth of contraception at a time. But in speaking to women across the district, so many of them find that they can't have access to that, that they actually go in and still are only getting the three month prescriptions. And when they call their healthcare insurance company, they're told, well, we just like to do three months. So if you wanna get a full year access, just negotiate that with your pharmacist, which Makes no sense to me. I've never gone to my pharmacist and said, here's my prescription, but instead of three months, I'd actually like a full year if you could do that. I, I've never heard of that. So this federal legislation, I think, is really necessary. So this is sort of looking to close, I guess, what would be a loophole in what the private insurers are required to do. I'm curious, Congresswoman, we've seen Democrats in particular really coalesce around reproductive rights um, as what I'll call a fundamental issue um, heading into the 2020 for election. Do you see it that way? Um, or is this an item? Uh, we know that you've worked on reproductive rights in the past. Um, but are you seeing this as an emerging issue as we eye the next presidential race? You know, I think this is such a key issue. We many of us were pretty appalled when and the Supreme Court rolled back what we felt were just basic, kind of the floor of protections that we could expect in reproductive health uh, and health care. And so to see Roe versus Wade overturned. Um, but, but what the Supreme Court said was this was going to be a state's rights issue. And even though we didn't like that, and I didn't like that because, of course, we're now seeing all of the many court cases in places like Texas where women are having very bad, near fatal results because of lack of access to reproductive health care. Um, 
what we didn't anticipate or, or maybe didn't want to anticipate is that that wouldn't be the end. That now we see so many Republicans coming after reproductive rights nationwide, and they're not going to stop until they have a nationwide ban against abortion and access to abortion care. And we've seen that in things like the National Defense Authorization Act, where service women who don't have a say as to where you are given orders. So you can be a, a great Jersey girl who decides I'm going to go serve my country, and suddenly you're stationed in Corpus Christi, Texas, as I was. And suddenly you have no access to the reproductive health care and reproductive rights that you assumed you would have in New Jersey. And if you need a, an abortion or if, if you have some some very bad issues related to reproductive health care, um, you are going to have to travel to get access to those services. And the DOD, the Department of Defense, now offers to help you travel and to make sure you have the leave you need to go do that. And we are seeing Republicans trying to put travel bans on our service women. And we are seeing Tuberville in the Senate holding up all military flag promotions. We currently don't have a commandant of the Marine Yeah, Corps. Let, let me ask you about that, because your colleagues in the Senate are set to vote possibly well into the night on the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. It was a bit chaotic when your House uh, took the vote. Do you anticipate um, bipartisanship uh, to get this thing moved by tomorrow so you all can go on recess? So we passed a bipartisan bill out of committee. Only one person voted against it in the entire House Armed Services Committee. And then it hit the floor. An extremist in the House loaded it up with really far right draconian measures that were against what most of the American people would want to see. So things like a travel ban for our service members. And quite frankly, this was the very very first time I voted against the National Defense Authorization Act. It's usually a very bipartisan piece of legislation. Um, I think it will be bipartisan out of the Senate because the Democrats are in charge and I think they have a commitment to serving our men and women in service and making sure that we are not using the Defense Act to score political points, but rather to support our men and women in uniform. So I think that will come out of the House. What we still have a huge issue with is that Senator Tuberville is holding up all military flag promotions. It, it is a huge hit on readiness. And I am hearing that he is dug in and that he does not want to move. And, and, and I have to tell you, for somebody to have such a huge misunderstanding of readiness, of supporting our men and women in uniform is really offensive to me, um, that he is disregarding all of the many ways this harms not only our service members, but their families. It is really incredibly offensive. Having served, of course, as a former Navy pilot, very quickly, what does that mean then for our national security, our preparedness? Well, um, right now, as I mentioned, we don't have a confirmed commandant of the Marine Corps. Um, as you know, we have a lot going on in the South China Sea. That's where our Marine Corps is very active. We need them there and we need them to have good leadership. Uh, we just saw the president put forward the very first um, woman to be the chief of naval operations. She'll be the first female on um, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Not only is she a fantastic officer who I served with at the Atlantic Fleet headquarters and is really well regarded, but also a milestone here that I think many people in our fleet are watching. She can't be confirmed. She is Her confirmation is being held up. We have the first woman who will be our superintendent of the United States Naval Academy. She should have been in office this summer. She is being held up. And that is just, that, that is, doesn't even, you know, come close to mentioning all of the men and women in uniform whose promotions are being held up. They cannot move to their new duty station. They can't get their kids in school. They can't have their kids under, you know, make new friends. They are all being held up and they don't know when they are going to be able to move their spouses. It's very hard as a military spouse to hold down a job because you get moved so much. But the way you do that is, is a lot of preparation, a, a lot of contact, a lot of engagement. They don't know when they're going to be able to move. Um, and if these men and women don't, don't move to their next duty station and don't kind of check off that level of experience that they need to continue to advance in our military, they're going to have to to retire 
because there are more people coming up that need to get that experience if we're going to continue to move people into leadership. So this is really putting uh, people's careers at risk. And these are men and women who have maybe served three decades in our armed forces. These are people who have made sacrifices, whose families have made sacrifices so they could serve our nation, and we're treating them, quite frankly, like dirt. So for Tuberville to, Tuberville to act as if this is you know, no problem. And he says, oh, I, I don't think this is a problem. Well, I mean, he's obviously never served because he has no understanding of what this is doing to the men and women in uniform. Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me.